Hi everyone! In this video, we will learn how to compute the design of experiments, one of the pillar functions of the software CAD. As I showed in the previous videos, there are many examples in the working directory in the CAD folder. And about the design of experiments, you have to open the DOE Excel file. As you can see, in this file, there are loads of DOE examples covering the most used designs. Let's see this real case study at NASA about a protein crystallization. And here we have the data set that we're going to import into CAD. Before doing that, I just want to introduce this case study and in particular focusing on the DOE method. The following variables have been defined, precipitant, supersaturation and impurity, as well as their levels, in this case too. The goal was to get bigger sized crystals and, as an indirect measure of it, the number of crystals was used, since a lower number of crystals meant, in this case, bigger crystals. So, in order to get a bigger size, we want to minimize this response, so the number of crystals. Considering two levels only, here we have a typical example of a full factorial design. This design requires a 2 power k number of experiments, so, with three variables, here is displayed the experimental matrix with eight experiments, which geometrically stand in the corners of the experimental domain, a cube considering three variables. Thanks to the experimental design, we can get a mathematical model which allows us to predict the experimental values in every point of the domain and getting the effects of all the variables we are studying with their interactions. Here we have our postulated model, which includes the constant, the linear terms, and the cross terms of each variable. And here there is our experimental matrix coded with our levels with the response. There are eight experiments with a replicate each for a total of 16 experiments. In order to validate the model, a couple of experiments at the central point have been performed. The replicates are fundamental to estimate the experimental variability. In this case, to estimate this, we have to use the pooled standard deviation with a result of 0.125 with 9 degrees of freedom. Anyway, we are going to load this experimental matrix made by 16 rows. Then we will calculate the coefficient significance using the experimental variability with 9 degrees of freedom. Now we can start CAT. And here we can see the matrix NASA, with 16 rows and 4 columns, which is already loaded by using the copy and paste option. Now we'll go to the menu Multilinear Regression, DOE Design of Experiments. We click on it, and here we can see a great number of options. Here we have to select independent variables, since we are not dealing with a mixture design that we will see later on in the next videos. We click on this. And here we have the new dialog box. Here we have, we already have the NASA as a matrix name. Here we have to select the rows and all rows will be considered. Here are the variables to be selected. In this case, one, two, three with the columns. And we can see that not every voice has a star code. In particular, our response does not have it. So it means that we can go on even if the matrix is given without the response. Then only the diagnostics of the model will be computed. This is very useful because before performing the experiments, we can check whether the matrix is compatible with the postulated model. Furthermore, if we knew the experimental variability, we could know the confidence interval in all the experimental domains. In case of no response, we must specify none, make sure that n is written with capital letter. Anyway, if the responses are available, then the coefficients of the model and their diagnostics will be computed. So we type in 4, and then we have to specify whether the higher terms of the model will be included. It's up to us, of course. So we select both and we click on OK. This dialog box defines the higher terms of the model. In this case, we have the cross terms. 
If not all the cross terms are required, then we have to input zero in the, in the corresponding cell. But in this case, we want to consider all of them and their interactions, so we put one. We click on OK. And then a new dialog box appears. This allows us to estimate the experimental variance using the residuals or by independent measurements. In this case, we add it. So we click on that. Then the experimental standard deviation was 0.125 when we had nine degrees of freedom. So we go on. Okay, finally here we have all the outputs. The first is about the diagnostic. Firstly, we have dispersion matrix, basically the core of our model. It is a square matrix with as many rows and columns as the terms in the model. The trace over here of the dispersion matrix, so basically the sum of the elements on the diagonal, provides a more compact indicator of the quality of the matrix. Then the variance inflation factor indicates the multicollinearity showing the quality of each term of the model. And here we see one is the minimum and means no collinearity. Of course, because we used an orthogonal design. Here we have the leverage of each point. Then there are our coefficients, always listed in the following order, constant, linear terms, Finally, the cross terms or interaction. Below that, there are the degrees of freedom, which come from our independent measurements. Here we see the standard deviation and the significance of the coefficients. We also have the semi-amplitude of the confidence interval for each coefficient. Then, from here, we have the diagnostics and fitting. And here, a series of parameters for appraising the quality of the model. So the variance of the experimental values of our response y, the standard deviation of the residuals and fitting, the percentage of explained variance. Then, to assess the theoretical quality and prediction, here there are the cross-validation values of the response by the leave-one-out method, together with some indicators of the model quality. Residuals and cross-validation, the root mean square error in cross-validation, and the percentage of explained variance in cross-validation. Now let's go back to the menu for the other options. Here we can see them. The extract and export command provides us the option to extract several items from the results of the model computation function. So we click on it. And these items, as we can see, are the dispersion matrix, our coefficients, the fitted values, and then the predicted values in cross-validation and their residuals. After clicking on one of these, the coefficients, for example, OK, we type in coif and see, we can see our coefficients. Then we can do whatever we like externally. Now we go back to the menu and we go to plots. And here we see all of the plots that we can print. Firstly, we'll have a look at the coefficient. By clicking on it, we print a graph with our coefficients. And here we have this beautiful graph with the response we are considering. Note that the constant is not shown. For the significant coefficients, the level of significance is shown by using the star code. Now we close it and we go back to the menu. The other plots are the scatter plots of the experimental data versus the model fitted values. And the experimental data versus the cross validation predicted values as well as the residuals in fitting and in cross-validation. Now we'll have a quick look at all of them. Experimental versus fitted and the experimental versus cross-validation predicted values. Residuals in fitting and in cross-validation. In this, the residuals in fitting are compared to the sample number and here in cross-validation. The residuals in cross-validation are compared to the experimental Y values, while here the residuals in cross-validation are compared to the sample number. And now we can close all of them.
Now we'll go back to the menu and we see the Libre surface independent values again. And here we have to set the domain. We are interested in the entire domain. So from minus one to plus one, we click on OK. For each axis, we want to set the variables. So x axis variables one, while y axis variables two. And we need to set the values of the third variables. So in this case, zero is fine. And we click on OK. Now we can see our leverage surface, here the contour plot, and here the surface, surface in three dimensions. The leverage plot makes it possible to know the precision of the estimate of the response in any point of the experimental domain. And here in the console we can see the minimum leverage and the maximum leverage. Down there we can see the impurity zero, which is the value we assigned previously. But also, we can find a very powerful option, which is the confidence interval surface. We click on it, and here we are asked the experimental variance estimated from independent measurement, so 0.125 to 5 and 9 degrees of freedom. Then again the range, so from minus 1 to plus 1, 1 and 2 in the x and y axis, and again 0. And with this, we have the same surface. Then, according to the leverage, you can directly have the semi-amplitude of the confidence interval in any point of the experimental domain. Then again, we see the minimum and the maximum value of the semi-amplitude confidence interval, and this is the value for the impurity. Now, we'll go back to the options. And here we see the response surface. We click on independent variables. We input the range and the variable, as well as the value of the third one. And here we have the contour plot and the response surface in three dimensions. Now let's print the other response surface, setting the other variable, 1 versus 3. And again, let's do the last one, 2 versus 3. And here we can see the surface, which is very important to understand the interaction between the variables. Now let's see the last option of this video. Prediction. The prediction function computes values of the response using a given set of x values. In this case, I'm going to use the central point of the design, which is the test point. I have already loaded the data set with the name NASA test with two replicates of the central point together with the experimental values. So we go to prediction, then independent variables, and here appears the dialog box. We have to type in NASA test in the voice matrix name with experiments to be predicted. And again, we can notice that not every voice has a star code, in particular the response. So this function can be used in two ways. Without the response, so without a y variable, the prediction function simply will provide the fitted values for the given set of x values, in this case the prediction of the central point. With the response, this function plots a graphical comparison between values computed by the model and the experimental values. Let's make the prediction. We are interested in all rows, x variables 1 to 3, and y variables, in this case we have these 4... We don't want experimental variables from residuals because we have the independent estimation. We click on OK. And we can see that we get our predicted results in the central point with the leverage and the upper and lower confidence interval with the residual. And here we can see the experimental and fitted y values together with the residual plot are printed. This is the end of our video, I hope you enjoyed it, so see you the next time and don't forget to subscribe!